Hey, Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to Let's Play Civilization VI as China with the Torres del Paine start. Now, I do have enough money to buy another tile in my capital, and I think I'm going to go ahead and grab this three food, two production tile because I'm currently working a one food, three production tile, and I'd like to keep this city growing if at all possible. I'm also going to go ahead, I should have switched away from Celestial Navigation, I kind of forgot to, but I'm going to go ahead and improve these two fishing boats. That'll give Chengdu a couple of really good growth tiles as well as unlock Celestial Navigation for me. And I will be trying to pick up harbors fairly early into this game. Uh, I'll probably go for like harbor, theater, square, industrial zone in this city. So I'll place down the harbor to lock in its price at 107 production. I'm not going to build it straight away and it's a decent harbor at plus three adjacency. Then this builder is going to head over to Taiwan to try to get a little bit more production. And actually, what I'm also going to do is, since my goal is to try to grow my capital city just a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and buy this high food tile as well to work this instead of this. And I'm going to swap this Torres tile to Taiwan so that I can get a little bit more production and growth to be able to finish the Ancestral Hall a little bit quicker. Now with the Unlock of Celestial Navigation we are eventually going to want to head towards shipbuilding but I would like to get two galleys out fairly early into this game. I'm going to go ahead and pick up ironworking to reveal iron. That might mess with some of the decisions I've made with regards to placing districts but we can always work around that. There's games and recreation unlocked. We will of course be starting off in here getting the uh getting the entertainment complex, but I might chop out a builder in here and I'm going to use this trade route to pick up an extra two production and two food by trading with Taiwan so that my capital can get to the all important seven population really quick. Time to get to work on drama and poetry so that we can get to recorded history to start the great library as well. I would of course be building the Apadana right now, but it's not really an option. And I also want to be getting the mausoleum fairly sharpish. There's bronze working, wonderful. We'll also be switching our government in a couple of turns. Let's go ahead and harvest here. That'll finish the builder. We can place down the entertainment complex. Delete that. That's going to take quite a bit of time to build, which is fine. Ah, okay. So iron appeared here, which is a little bit unfortunate, but I can at least improve it for a nice 2-2 tile with one science on it as well. I want to get the... I can't get the University of Saint core but I definitely want to get in the direction of uh, universities to be able to get the Oxford eventually. So I'm kind of tempted to head down this route. If I can pick up apprenticeship fairly early this game, I think that'll uh, have a lot of value for me for the plus one production on mines there. There's drama and poetry. So I will be able to start placing my theater squares fairly soon. It's not quite time to start placing them. Although ideally I would, you know, kind of be working on them already, but I have a few wonders I need to get sort of built first and I'll need builders to get that done. And that's why I'm kind of really quickly chopping out and improving mines around this uh, sort of Torres to be able to maximize the amount of production. Like I'm getting Ancestral Hall a lot sooner than normal. I lost Suzerainty of Leventa and I like having Suzerainty of Leventa. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in there. I could put a colossal head here for plus three faith, but I think I prefer production here at this stage of the game. Let's go ahead and start converting these cities to be able to get uh, the extra era score from that. Ooh, and there's Nazca. If I could get a city up somewhere here near this desert, I could make great use of that. I kind of wish I had known this desert was up here. I think I did know it, but I didn't really play off that knowledge. I could have maybe gotten a really good Petra here if I'd settled somewhere there, but the loyalty is a bit of a problem for me now. Uh, Norway is over here trying to be annoying spreading his religion as well. Uh, I don't like that. I'm going to maybe see if I can talk to him and ask him to stop. Now I don't have enough diplomatic favor unfortunately, so I will have to try to fight off his religion the traditional way. Entertainment complex is finished and we shall get to work on the arena so that we can start producing the Colosseum. Norway wants mutual open borders as well as horses. Let's see if he'll also buy my silk for a good price. Actually, I'm going to leave silk out of the deal and then I'll try to trade that individually next turn to maybe uh, Canada or someone. There's currency. We aren't going to be building a whole lot of commercial hubs this game. Don't really have the empire for it, but I can try to see if... Yeah, he'll give me seven gold per turn for this. And I'm also going to go ahead and sell him... 20 Diplo favor. Ah, looks like he doesn't quite have the money for that. So I'm going to cut that in half and then keep adding Diplo points until he gives me all of his money. There we go. 18 gold per turn. Beautiful. Sorry, not 18 gold per turn. 18 Diplo favor for a whole bunch of gold. So now we have 400 gold that we can play with. Definitely could use this gold, for example, to purchase a granary in Chengdu. I would like to start building the harbor in here so that I can get to work on some of the other stuff. And I could either get grants on Pingala or I could go ahead and pick up Magnus for chops or pick up Liang for better builder production. 
Kind of a tough choice here. I kind of, hmm. I think grabbing Magnus and putting him in Taiwan would be a great thing to do so that I can mass produce settlers in here. And I'm also gonna go ahead and swap out the inspiration card and plug in the settler production card. And now I'll be able to get these settlers in eight turns while I'm still producing important infrastructure in my capital. Another city converted and we have secured ourselves another normal age. And I have a builder finished over here too. These builders are gonna be fed directly into the Colosseum in five turns. So I'm just gonna think about where I might do an improvement or two. I don't think that pasture is gonna be hanging around for a long time, so that'll definitely be going away. I'm gonna spend a little bit of my gold to purchase this forest over here so that I can harvest it to finish the arena a turn sooner so that I can then go ahead over here, buy the Colosseum tile, place the Colosseum, and immediately start feeding my builders into it. I want this done as soon as possible, and each builder charge is worth uh, two turns of production on this thing. I also think buying this crabs tile is a pretty good return on investment because it makes it a two food, uh, three gold tile, which I think is, and I think that's super worthwhile because now I have uh, quite a few really good gold tiles in the city. Not very good production, but that's okay. We'll eventually getting, get, be getting around to getting production in here. And gold is kind of like production that I can move around my empire anyway. Right, there's the great library. So I am going to want to get started on my campus as soon as the city hits seven population. In the meantime, I'll feed every ounce of production I can into getting the Colosseum. And once the city hits population seven, we'll get to work on getting the great library up. I'm also gonna go ahead and swing in here and grab the provision promotion on Magnus because I do have a few settlers that I wanna produce and not losing population in Taiwan would be very nice. Let's get to work on defensive tactics. This city is working on its harbor and I want it to be working on the harbor because I want to be able to build the mausoleum and also the great lighthouse in here. I don't know if I'll get the great, great lighthouse, but I would like the great lighthouse if I could potentially get it. All right, time to feed another builder in here. That'll be the Colosseum finished next turn. There'll be two turns away from hitting the population we need to. And then we can probably chop out the campus in here to get the great library up and running. I think I've produced a ton of builders at this point of the game. And so it's about time that I started switching away to producing my campuses. I think Guangzhou is maybe going to work on a theater square, not campuses, sorry, theater square first. So I think Guangzhou is going to be working on that once it finishes this builder. Oh, there's Upsoner Hollow. That's good. A little bit of Aerosaur. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get that Golden Age. I would love to get the Golden Age if I could. But there's the Colosseum. This is going to give a ton of culture to my entire empire, as well as a ton of amenities, giving me generally just a really powerful set of yields. I've got one turn of production to screw around with in here. I'm gonna put one turn into an archer so that we can uh, potentially have a proper defensive unit should Norway decide to come after me because he has a lot of units right now. And if he comes after me with his navy, I, I kind of need to actually get him to be a bit friendlier with me. So I might need to stop off to pick up a couple of galleys in one of these cities. Time for the campus in Jeanne. Let's go ahead and plonk it down in the capital. I'm not gonna finish that archer just yet because the campus is a bit more of a priority. And I'm also gonna chop to get in a turn sooner. Taiwan needs to continue to build me settlers. I will go ahead and place the theater square in here. I might even stop to get the theater square, but I think getting the settler first is the right move because settlers will sort of pay themselves off over a long period of time. A lot of my cities don't have access to mines, so picking up lumber mills is a really good move at this point in the game. I might even consider keeping a couple of these forests around for lumber mills. For the sake of a forest like this though, I'm gonna go ahead and harvest it so that I can get my library a couple turns sooner and we can start producing the great library just way faster. All right, there is defensive tactics, unlocking the mausoleum, which will be built in this city over here. I'm gonna to need to remember to have some builder charges ready. I do have a couple of builders finishing for that purpose and we're one turn away from getting the great library. I think now is the time to go ahead and get towards feudalism that'll allow me to get builders more efficiently in terms of their build charges. I'm also going to go ahead and promote Pingala with grants so that I can get more great people points. Those are going to pay dividends over the long haul of the game, especially once I get the theater square up in Jian. I am quite a bit away from getting to the 10 population I need to get the theater square in here, but I might plonk down a couple of food improvements in here to try to get that food surplus up just a little bit. Beautiful, there is the library completed. Now that we can get to work on the great library, I'm gonna plonk it right there. I'm gonna delete that pin and we'll start feeding my builders into this wonder. I'm already making 15 tourism per turn, which is pretty decent at this stage of the game. And I'm hoping to skyrocket that quite a bit. It's not gonna be a super fast win, but I'm hoping that it'll be a fairly nifty and quick one. 
Time to make a dedication. Unfortunately, we didn't get another golden age, but I'm going to go ahead and grab myself monumentality because I plan to build quite a few new specialty districts. I really, really want this theater square, but I have to just com continue to produce settlers. I only need two more and then I'm done for the rest of the game. I think I am going to start putting envoys into Nazca just to start getting friendship with them. Uh, but that's fine. I probably should have switched out the card to get double, but you know, eh, it's not always worth it. We are two turns from finishing the Great Library and we're a few turns from starting on the mausoleum and the uh, thingy here. No, I'm tempted. I should maybe delay the settler for th or this builder for a few turns. So let's go ahead and just work on the monument in here. The very first World Congress, I'll vote for myself twice and I'll vote for ranged units to get plus five combat strengths because that really helps me out on the defense. Looks like melee units won, but I did win the new districts act as culture bombs, which is quite handy. Pop a pasture down in the capital. The capital has amazing production, by the way. 33 production at this phase of the game is redonkulous. If I can get this theater square up, uh, we'll be in amazing shape. I probably could have afforded to skip this uh, holy site this game. And unfortunately, uh, the... I was almost going to say Russia because of their color, but the Norwegians have converted my capital. I'm just waiting for these goddamn missionaries to go away so I can reconvert. But it shouldn't be too hard. I do have two fully charged up uh, missionaries here to take back my capital. And I think I'll be able to manage it. I, I hope so anyway, but I'll need to keep buying more as I reconvert. There is the Great Library. And the big advantage of the Great Library is now if we go up into our capital... Uh, we got a ton of boosts, by the way. But if we go up into our capital, you can see we have two extra great slots of riding, uh, which is going to be really, really handy when we eventually grab the promotion for Pingala that gives him the curator promotion. We're not quite generating great works of riding yet, but that's just going to be a little bit of an efficiency thing. Now in our capital, we're essentially done um, doing important early game stuff. So really, we're just waiting for the city to grow. So what we need is housing in here. And I think the best way to get housing in my capital is to maybe plonk down a farm triangle over here which is going to involve getting a couple of builders, which means I can now take the builder pressure off of my other cities and my capital can start sending out builders, at least until it gets its own theater square online so we can start churning out great works of writing. I am going to want to pick up um, printing fairly early in this game and I also want to get my way up to scientific theory. So I feel like going for education here is a good move. I did skip a great scientist in the hope that I would pick up Hildegard and it looks like I am going to be able to pick up Hildegard here which makes me very happy. Managed to reconvert my capital let's get ourselves another missionary so I feel like I'm not going to try to reconvert it again if they convert it um, until I can get another missionary so we'll be waiting for fate. Now trying to defend my religion here is a bit of a pain in the ass but I think it's a necessary thing to do. There's feudalism and we can plug in the all-important serfdom card which is going to give these builders that I'm producing an extra charge that makes me very happy and we'll get those finished so we'll have high high build charge builders ready to run around and start improving my empire properly so that's more or less it for the early game wonders what I really want to start picking up is heading towards humanism I would maybe like to pick up the anchor Watt this game um I don't think there's a whole lot of other things that I really want to go for really my main goals are to pick up a merchant republic to have a better government and uh, humanism as well as civil service for alliances. I might get to work on civil service so I can start building relationships with these AIs. The harbor is complete in Chengdu. Let's get to work on the mausoleum. That's going to be a super important wonder. And pretty much all of my builders, with the exception of this very first one, will be heading over here to get that finished. Something that can be worth doing in your cities is actually chopping the rainforest underneath tiles like Coco. In particular, if you're going to be relying on adjacent tiles for things like seaside resorts. Since this is a hill, I don't need to worry about that. But I am going to chop anyway to get the city to finish its monument a little bit quicker. And minus one food isn't that big of a deal to me. There's Hildegard of Bingen. I'm making 11 great scientist points per turn, by the way, thanks to the combination of Oracle and the 100% uh, great people points generated in this city combined with the great library and this so I'm just getting a, a ton of great scientist points which is going to give me a really really nice holy site that now contributes to my science income like you can see how all these things are starting to tie together if I had just got the Apadana I would have been in much better shape unfortunately we weren't able to get it but you know it is what it is reconvert my capital and grab myself another missionary I need to start taking back my religion now you can see here a single great wall only produces two gold but if I attach them together they produce four gold and eventually if we type in here into this you can see here the great wall will eventually produce as extra 
uh, culture here if it is adjacent to more great wall tiles. I'm actually not sure why it's not producing culture right now. I'm a little bit confused by that. Is that like require humanism or something? Ah, it requires castles. Gotcha. So I need to pick up the castles technology, which is over here, which is something I do plan to pick up because eventually we're going to be building walls in all of our cities. Time to start feeding builders into the mausoleum. I'm tempted to purchase the lighthouse in here, but I think just feeding builders in is fine for now. I'm actually building builders so fast in my capital that Guangzhou can't finish a builder because its production is so low. So I think I'm just going to put that to bed and uh, switch to something else because this city just can't can't keep up. <laughs> it just can't. Oh, man. With civil service, we could start looking at diplomacy. And I think Norway is going to be an important ally here because of their large military. So we need to look at what makes them unhappy. And it's mostly the fact that I don't have a strong navy. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull out urban planning just for a few turns so that we can plug in maritime industries and start work on a couple of galleys in one of my cities here. I think Chengdu is actually a pretty good candidate because we can always just switch back to the mausoleum and uh, those galleys will take like eight turns to build. I'm also going to be picking up another holy site by the Torres because that's just another four food tile and that holy site will actually generate me a lot of faith throughout the game. I can now build universities. I am going to want to get universities so that I can get to work on um, the Oxford University ASAP. It's not a super high priority and it's quite a few techs away and it's quite deep into the tech tree. So I might stop off for a few other choice things like aqueducts and dams. The reason I want aqueducts and dams is so that I can build up a really strong industrial zone over here in Chen. I've got 10 turns until I get my theater square in the capital. So I can either choose to keep producing builders to finish off these uh, wonders that I want to get, or I can, or I can go for the university. I think I'm going to choose, I could get the Minkanashi temple as well. I think I'm going to choose to make a couple more builders so that I can get these wonders. Because my plan is to get the Colosseum in here as well. Uh, I, I want to try to get Colosseum and the, uh, the lighthouse in here. If I can get all of those wonders, then I'm off to a really, really great start in getting classical era wonders to get me that little bit of tourism start in the game. That's the really powerful thing about China is you can be building multiple gr wonders at the same time, thanks to the builder charge mechanic that you can just use builders as a way to rush wonders. It's a really, really, really powerful mechanic. And like I'm building almost three wonders at the same time when I research Colossus, just by virtue of using my builders and pushing their production inside those wonders. Another really important aspect that a lot of people forget about tourism games is making sure that you have open borders with as many AIs as possible, partially for scouting information and partially because it gives you a tourism boost. If you come over here to the culture screen and I hover over Harold, you can see here I'm getting a 25% boost for open borders with my tourism, pre tourism pressure against them, which means I have already generated nearly 500 tourism against them this early into the game. And the final wonder that we will be rushing is, in fact, the Colossus. I am going to be crushing a crab tile for that, but that's okay. Uh, let's go ahead and make sure we finish this mausoleum. There we go. There's the mausoleum giving us plus one science, plus one faith, and plus one culture on all coastal tiles in this city. We will be taking advantage of that very, very quickly. Let's go ahead and make sure that we're also building the lighthouse and the Colossus. And I'm also, at the same time, I'm trying to get galleys up in the city. Like, I've just, the city is accomplishing so much with so little. I've also discovered that the Temple of Artemis hasn't been built yet. So I'm going to see if I can get that online and see if I can maybe purchase a builder over here to get that up and running faster. Damn, looks like the Great Lighthouse was finished before I could get it done. Not the end of the world. It's kind of the lower priority of all the wonders that I was hoping to get online here. But still, now I have a navy. Norway will probably be a little bit less upset with my navy next turn. And um, we're going to continue to build one. I was hoping to get the Great Lighthouse purely just for the tourism and the fact that I would have a wonder. Not the end of the world that I didn't get it. And I do want suzerainty of Nazca as well. So I'll start putting envoys in there. Second last settler has been plonked down in Beijing. Beijing is going to just immediately work on a harbor. I find harbor based builds are like really, really strong in the current patch, which makes me really, really enjoy playing them. I also have another great scientist. I think I might skip this one. Let me have a look. What was the most recent one? And how close are other people? Canada is actually really, really far away here. So I feel like I could potentially pick this up. 
without hurting myself too badly. We'll go ahead and pop you in there. That'll give me siege tactics, which isn't too terrible. The Maori just sent me a delegation, which makes me think they'll become a little bit more friendly soon. And I think this is our final settler, unless we want to try to settle up and around here to the north, which I might actually go for, because there's potentially room for two more cities here. It does delay my theater square that I really want to get online, even more turns, but I think it's a worthwhile cause. Oh, there's even Signy. And you know what? <laughs> this is like one of the first games I've ever seen it not be on Tundra. All right, let's go ahead, insert this builder into the Colossus. We'll insert this builder in as well. Basically shave a ton of turns off here. And then we'll also improve the fish over here in this city. This is going to be a really, really nice city for coastal yields. I'm going to want to give it as much coastline as possible. Kind of sad that I crushed that crab tile um, for the Colossus. It wasn't necessary after the great light, lighthouse, uh, lighthouse was destroyed. But, you know, it is what it is. What can you do? It's probably not worth it to quick build the Temple of Artemis, but I'm going to give it a go anyway. Starting to recover my religion as well. I do have majority pressure in the southern area, but I want to maybe convert Leventa and Zhao Dong to just kind of put the pressure on Norway a little bit. Two turns until the capital ticks over and becomes a uh, city capable of building a theater square. So we're going to get to work on the water mill. My theater squares have come out very late this game, but I think we're set up for a strong game regardless. I think it's going to be an interesting game. Oh my God, Wilfred has eight envoys in Nazca? Okay, well, I guess that's a that's a pipe dream now for me. And I need to find something else to do at my time. I might actually come over here to Taiwan and start just chopping out all this crap with a builder. Um, yeah, I think that seems reasonable, actually. If I just chop this out, I'll get these settlers a little bit quicker. I'll be able to settle up here a little bit quicker. I'll be in a stronger game position. I'm also pretty close to getting the Temple of Artemis here, which makes me extremely happy. And I think I'll, I think I will put one more build charge into the Colossus. And since that's going to be finished next turn anyway, I won't bother actually working it. Owie, you got a major flood in the city of Chen. It did fertilize a tile, but it also did a bit of damage. Not the end of the world. I just want to get these last couple of cities reconverted. And since the Temple of Artemis is finishing next turn anyway with a Builder Charge, we'll also get to work on the Theater Square. Time to finish the Colossus, getting ourselves a free trade route. Beautiful. There we are. And that's going to get me that free trade route. And I want to start trading internationally now. And I'm going to be trading from my capital, I think. So I'll place a trader in there and I'll go ahead and purchase another trader as well. And this way I'll be able to start trading with Norway and Canada and be able to pick up the extra tourism from trade routes with other players. I think, though, we've made plenty of progress this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please uh, let me know if you guys are playing along with the save file that I should have provided in the comments of the first video. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.